So I thought it was a good time to give you a bit of a tour of our um, new polycarbonate tunnel. Timber tunnel we've called it, timber frame poly tunnel. Or greenhouse if you like, hybrid greenhouse. Um, we built this this summer on our croft. We're up in the North Highlands of Scotland. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd share the design really. I had a lot of um, ideas from different YouTube videos on how to design mine. And I thought I'd share what I've, what I've been up to. Also now we've had loads of feedback on this um, uh, through social media and um, people are really keen on on maybe getting one themselves. So we're looking at selling uh, uh, tunnels from next year, 2023. Uh, but also I'd like to do a set of plans and um, uh, build instructions as well. Maybe some more detailed videos on how to build them as well in the future. So kind of watch this space or have a look at our website to sign up for, for that if you're interested. But anyway, this video is just to give you a kind of idea of how I built it and of inspiration really in case you're looking at something similar yourself um so it's the whole point of it for me was that we we live in the, the north islands of scotland it's really windy up here sometimes in winter particularly and a normal polytunnel just doesn't cut it this year in particular we had loads of polytunnel disasters all over the highlands so if we were going to get one we wanted to make sure it was strong enough to withstand the um the wind and the rain and, and yeah pretty horrendous conditions we get up here Normal plastic as well for poly cut for uh, poly tunnels needs to be replaced every maybe five to ten years, I think. Um, maybe a bit longer if you're in a sheltered spot, but um, we didn't want that either. So this polycarbonate, this twin wall polycarbonate we went for, 10 mil, and uh, designed to last a lot longer than that. It's got a 10 year guarantee, but I'm hoping for sort of 20 years out of this tunnel. And then the other idea is I wanted it made out of locally grown, Scottish grown um, timber as well. So I've sort of sized it to be what I can get easily from sawmills. Um, actually 3.6 metre lengths. Um, yeah, so it's untreated Douglas fir. Nice and durable. It's going to last a long time. Um, in the front we put a stable door in so we can vent it to different ways. You can prop the door open or you can just latch it open on this hook here. And it stops chickens and stuff coming in, in the, when they're not wanted as well. And we close it up at night. Um, I'll give you a quick tour. So it's uh, 10 and a half metres by... 4 meters, 4.2 meters wide. We went for three beds of about a meter each with wood chip paths in between. And we're growing in the soil. We didn't bother with raised beds. We wanted to be growing in the soil. And we'll mulch all this with compost and seaweed and bracken and whatever we can get hold of this winter to improve it a little bit. But we just thought we'd get some crops in here this year. We've only had it for a, a month. So this is all kind of stuff that was raring to go in here that we've chucked in some courgettes and tomatoes and salads and peas and things. So I'll show you the, the trusses. This was obviously the main work in building this is bending these trusses. So what I did is I used three strips of timber, uh, Douglas fir timber cut into these strips and then another three that side and then filled with a block in between. And there's five blocks in total, I think, um, on each truss, rib, if you like, probably a rib is a better description. Uh, and they're all glued with polyurethane adhesive, bolted through, screwed through. And then we've got these horizontal uh, purlins as well which are staggered they fit in between each truss uh, each rib uh, and they make the whole thing super super rigid really really strong it's absolutely no flex on this at all you can I've had a hammock strung across it and all sorts yeah it's really really strong structure goes up to a ridge piece um, the ridge piece is actually two thinner pieces stuck together but if I did it again I'd do it on one thicker piece because I didn't need it to be two in the end uh, I was kind of making it up as I went along, I guess, in some ways, and seeing how it went and then adjusting things as I went. You know, it's the first time I built it. Obviously, there were some examples on YouTube of other people that have built similar things, but I wanted a different size and different spec and everything, so it was still, still a lot of learning to be done, learning on the job. And the end as well is framed in the same Douglas fir and a big uh, one metre by one metre window. Did have that on a, a pulley system so you can pull the window open, but the string snapped. <laughs> so it's just wedged open at the moment, I need to get some more string. That worked quite well until it's not. Um, yeah, what else to say? Really, the big, the bottom is is a big uh, six inch, so one fifty by fifty Douglas fir beam that goes all the way around. So it was the main thing is to get that level before you even start level and square, and it's bolted in. Let me find a bit the way so you can see down here. Uh, these are big. Need to cut that bolt off. But these are big screw anchors that go right into the ground. So they're hammered in and then bolted to the structure. Um, so super super strong um, and it avoids the use of concrete which is really nice and I've, I've put blocks in just and slates and things just to help, help level it all the way around um, so it's set, set straight and level 
but yeah the idea was was to avoid cementing in big posts and all the way around but I still needed to be really strong and really well anchored I think I went with 14 of those anchors all the way around and they're two foot long each so they um, going right into the subsoil as well so so really strong so yeah uh, what else to show you? I'll show you outside and how I've attached the sheets because that's a bit different to what to what other tunnels do as well um, I wanted to come up with my own system for that um, I didn't really design this to be like particularly pretty or anything like that it was really designed just to use local timber it's ended up looking really smart I think um, so I'm really pleased with that but on the outside so you've got these twin wall polycarbonate sheets that bend quite easily actually to this shape um, and they go up to a ridge piece there the ridge is timber um, and then I've put a, a cap on top of that to shed the water off that works really well and when I was installing that I was walking up and down it had a ladder foot, um, mounted up there it's really strong you can easily walk up and down this tunnel there's no flex at all so that was a good test and I'm pretty convinced it's gonna last well um, but yeah to join the sheets together so you lay each sheet on and then bend it to the bend it to the shape or just it sort of bends itself actually and then to put these cover strips on to join the sheets and they've got a little um, rubber seal underneath them that stops the water leaking so I thought I'd do that it was um, just a kind of simpler design really than buying the the normal cover strips you get and the joining strips you get for these sheets which are expensive and also mean it's very difficult to replace a, a panel if you ever needed to if there was a breakage or something like that the tree came down on it I don't know something like that um, our site was really not very level <laughs> we we're on a hill um, so I had to dig this out which is why these sort of diagonal braces you can see are there um, not for support not you wouldn't normally need them but um, this I had to actually build it up about two foot sort of 60 70 centimeters um, to get the level right so that's what they're there for and they give me a bit of a former as well to hold the soil in and then um, yeah it's gradually getting getting colonized by various plants and uh, the comfrey is growing back because the comfrey was all the way up to here eventually I'm sure that will come back um, yeah that's about it really I'll to show you but I say if you're interested and follow us for updates it looks like we're going to be doing a lot more of these in the future so have a look at the website and, and I hope to get plans out uh, by the end of the year or early next year and then maybe starting to sell kits into next year as well 2023 so, so have a look at that all right thanks for watching cheers bye